good morning and a warm welcome to one and all myself kaushik business executive at manage cia welcome back to the 17th webinar of the saturday webinar series startup innovations in dairy and livestock sector today it's an interesting topic and uh, we'll be discussing a lot today and uh, center for innovation and agripreneurship is a center of excellence in agri business incubation hosted at national institute of agricultural extension management it's one of the leading agri business incubators in india and has incubated more than 210 startups from various focus areas of agri and allied sectors to leave a high paying job and to invest in a startup can be really risky and uh, there are some who take this risk to achieve in the life these days we see a huge surge in the demand and it's the dairy sector it's one of the important sectors in, in the indian economy <laughs> covid has uh, really created a lot of opportunities and it has been fueled by the pandemic and uh, startups have emerged with varied technologies as well as products uh, to name some livestock management milking automation smart dairy farming advanced analytics and testing the milk quality for different parameters these are the cutting edge innovations in the dairy and livestock industry and uh, the scope and opportunities are really huge for entrepreneurs who want to be in the dairy industry and today's webinar will explain about the scope and opportunities I request Dr. Sarvanan Raj, Director, Agricultural Extension, National Institute of Agricultural Extension Management, and CEO of Manage CIA, to give the opening remarks. Thank you. Yeah, very good morning to all of you. And uh, Dr. Rasis Kumar Singh, Principal Scientist, ICAR Indian Council of Agriculture Research, NDRI, National Dairy Research Institute and uh, our friend and uh, manage incubate mr kisor indukuri from sits farm and uh, all the participants and the manage team and very good morning to all of you dairy is quite interesting dairy and livestock sector and uh, manage many of might be aware uh, we are having something like uh, agri clinics agri business center scheme this scheme from 18 years we are doing most of the agriculture graduates today even science graduates are eligible to under this training the interesting part is there are there are 32 different type of activities they are doing when we analyze all the activities or ventures what they will establish every third person those who are establishing every third person he goes for the dairy and that may be quite interesting and a surprise to us and uh, majority of them they won't come dairy graduate or veterinary graduate most of them are agri graduates and uh, very few veterinary and uh, fishery graduates they will be there even compared to fisheries uh, there are a large number of agri graduates they will take it up uh, dairy enterprise and uh, they are very successful across the country and uh, some of them they are role model like uh, somebody like dr gajendra bamaniya is veterinary graduate and uh, some he is doing in gujarat he is having excel breeding uh, excel breeding like that he is having excel breeding center like that he is having his own start uh, own uh, uh, veterinary business initiative and uh, we thought this scabc agri clinics started and uh, somewhere in 2002 it is only to provide the self employment to agriculture and allied sector like veterinary and dairy or fisheries graduates but this particular person Gajen, dr gajendra bamaniya he gives few hundred of them, uh, you, rural youth and veterinary and other graduates, they are getting job from him. That's a quite interesting thing. They are, la they are job creators for large number of people and also they employ large number of rural youth in Gujarat. Similarly, in Tamil, uh, in Tamil Nadu and other parts of the country, there are large number of these graduates. They are doing mostly on indigenous. Recently, last five, six years, there are a lot of uh, importance for indigenous cattle breeding and services they are providing. And uh, some of them, they are providing something related to veterinary services on wheels, even remote part of Assam or Manipur or in Kerala. There are some women entrepreneurs, those who are in uh, veterinary, they provide the veterinary services uh, in wheels. They will take the wheels. For example, they will provide the emergency services in uh, livestock sector. Even uh, it is in Kochi, there is one of our ACABC trainee. Now, because of his services, uh, she, was, uh, re, re, she was incubated at uh, Arkevi Raptar at uh, Kerala Agriculture University. And in and around Kochi, she tries to provide the emergency services like ambulance and going, but they will treat there only. They no need to take back to hospitals, veterinary hospital. 
but they treat in the vehicle itself. The vehicle itself uh, become the hospital. That's a quite interesting. And uh, we have some couple of them like that in across the country, especially pet animals and other things, especially in the uh, northeast part of the country. But it is evolving in the big way. And uh, uh, many, that's what even diploma holders, agriculture, all they are taking up. That's why it's a quite interesting sector. Everybody wants to do because when we are trying to, why they are? Because they are very much associated with the dairy, especially in UP and other parts of the country, because it is UP or Bihar, it is very much traditionally, it is with the household, it's uh, over the generations they are doing. These graduates also want to continue those type of dairy and they want to improve. During this, if you see, uh, recent days, there are a lot of uh, innovations are coming. When dairy, they are, when they are taking traditionally, they put a lot of manual labor, even these graduates, they may not end up uh, getting better profit or providing employment to other or uh, veterinary services to large number of people. That's why these type of technologies are IoT based devices are coming and uh, even somebody, one of our startups to identify like something like other and to identify the animals for the insurance or the bank loan. There is very interesting GOMUK like that. There is a uh, interesting uh, startup from Manage. It is there, Dr. Kartikeya. Even series also we get a very interesting startups and uh, our SIDS farm is there. And when uh, it is a very interesting story, when a SIDS farm, somebody told me maybe uh, if uh, precisely maybe four years or three years before, somebody, one of my uh, trainee came and told, he was a student, PhD student, he came as a uh, facilitator and uh, when I'm trying for, we are planning, we are trying to conduct the agro tourism and uh, then we are conducting Pune and some of the agro, stars, uh, agro tourism units. But that uh, boy he told, Sir, somewhere here near uh, Hyderabad, uh, somebody <laughs> keeping buffaloes and uh, there are children are going and there are uh, IT couples are going. They are paying for seeing buffalo like that, he told. Exactly, first he told like that. And then I was laughing. <laughs> Don't tell like that everywhere buffaloes, whether in uh, Tamil Nadu or it is in any state, Bihar, all the roads, everywhere buffalo will be roaming. And even I born part of a family with buffaloes like that. I was uh, laughing. I didn't take it very seriously. And uh, But he was interesting. No, sir, you should uh, look for that. And uh, it may be very quite interesting addition like that you told. And also another interesting told thing he was telling, sir, those people not ordinary farmers, sir. They are software engineers, sir. They are coming from US. <laughs> so that's what, then uh, it's a curiosity, actually. Really, he was very seriously. And he told, sir, I conducted case studies, sir. You see, like that he convinced me too much. <laughs> then I seen and uh, we took our participants. That's what, that time I understood. I was born and brought up in the farm family, more than three decades I was in the farm only, my house itself farm, but I never thought seeing buffalo, somebody will come and pay like that. But uh, somebody can sow buffalo and they can have the evening dinners or something like that and tent they can put and uh, couples with children, they will come and they will stay there and uh, they will enjoy whole the dairy farming or and also they will see something like milk, which is a pure milk coming from organic like that. And uh, they can vouch for it and they will become customers. And those type of approach, really, it is impressive. It was something three and a half years back, I think, otherwise four years back. Uh, that made me hold my perspective to change about agribusiness. Otherwise, we are doing 18 years agribusiness and most of people are doing uh, agribusiness. That's what only in 33% of our success story, like uh, we have 30,000 of them across the country. Uh, but uh, none of them, they thought like Indukuri, Bihar, UP or Bihar, nobody will pay for uh, village areas, generally they won't pay. But they should have started somewhere, uh, post areas, IT city or somewhere like that. Uh, but Indukuri came from uh, US and he got the idea that uh, I think so. Maybe experience makes a difference and also thinking something differently. That's what, uh, it has a great scope and uh, there are a lot of innovative ideas are coming. Uh, the people, our startups are coming. This area is a very less startup. For example, animal husbandry and uh, fisheries sector and the small ruminants. It may be very quite interesting area to the innovators and agri partners to take it up forward. A lot of innovations and uh, startups we can see and we can promote. And uh, today maybe uh, we might be hearing two very exciting and uh, two different uh, set of speakers. One is come from the purely researcher and academician and also he's the he is promoting a large number of startups through RKV Raptor, 
uh, incubation center at the NDRI, and also Indukuri is uh, one of the successful startup. And uh, we can't tell startup. I don't. I doubt after his, his final presentation, the figures told and the annual turnover he told. We are really. It's the industry. He is not running the startup now. I think it has become industry. He is moving forward. He may be more inspiration to. Many of you today you are attending, or you may pass this information to large number of people. And uh, thank you for all attending. And uh, maybe today our uh, new batch of managed uh, startup incubation family is extended another 65 innovators, and uh, they are today joining with us this webinar. There's maybe some of them earlier, and uh, most of them maybe first time they are participating. And I welcome on behalf of managed team, and we see a large number of regular regular customers for our. Uh, Started a webinar series. They are also there, and I welcome all of you. I hope uh, today is may be very exciting, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a great learning today. Let us see. Thank you very much, Dr. Mr. Kausik. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, sharing your thoughts regarding dairy as well as the livestock sector. And uh, today, I invite the first speaker for our uh, webinar, uh, Dr. Kishore Indukuri, who is a founder and CEO of Sits Farm Private Limited. Uh, as I said, like uh, he's been back from the U.S. and to leave a high-paying job, it's very, you know, risky. But still, uh, he's done it out here, and uh, he's got a Ph.D. and a Master's in University of Massachusetts Amherst in Polymer Science Engineering, and uh, a B.S. Chemistry, that is Bachelor of Science Chemistry from IIT Kharagpur. Also got a corporate experience with Intel and Ohm Scientific. And uh, Mr. Kishore is really passionate uh, about sits farm and his core aspect is here to provide access to healthy and natural food which is free from antibiotics and uh, harmful adulterants i request uh, dr kishore indukuri to start his session thank you Uh, thank you, Professor Saravanan Raj. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Shagar Deshmukh. Thank, thank you, Kaushik. And uh, thank you, Manage, for giving me this opportunity. I mean, it's been a great journey. Uh, uh, I've been uh, to Manage a couple of times. And thank you for the wonderful, wonderful introduction, uh, Dr. Uh, Saravanan Raj. Uh, uh, this journey, uh, this entrepreneurship journey, um, you know, I'm actually thankful. I've uh, met wonderful, you know, people, employees. Uh, you know, it's been a. Uh, I'm actually thankful for this, uh, for Sets Farm for giving me this opportunity. I should say, you know, we started. Uh, 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 we started this as a. Uh, uh, I mean, when we started, you know, I, I wanted to do agriculture. I loved the concept of sitting on a tree and doing something. Yeah, uh, but um, you know, little did I know what it what it takes uh, to really start something and drive it, right? Uh, uh, so I will uh, share my presentation. If you can, uh, I'm not able to share content. Maybe I'll put up my slides. Uh, Kaushik, if you could help me share. Uh, yes, sir. Share yes, button sir. in the middle of the screen. So somehow it's not letting me do it, uh, Kaushik. I can do it. I yes. hope I'm, uh, the screen is visible. Yes, it is. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, um, so as I said, I mean, maybe I'll um, I'll start with, uh, and it's an honor to share the uh, uh, today's webinar series with uh, Professor A. K. Singh. Uh, it's an honor to present here. I mean, we are a, 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 a still a small ent entity. All of our staff and employees at Sits Farm feel like we have great things to do. We have big things to achieve. Uh, we're still a very, very small entity. Uh, let me start with telling you how uh, the, uh, the, the idea started for us. You know? When I moved back um, uh, from the US, the, one of the first things that we were looking for, uh, good milk for our kid, right? We had a one and a half year old son. Um, his name is Siddharth, and when we look, when we looked out to see, we, we could not really find, uh, you know, uh, 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 
uh, a reliable source of good quality milk. There were people. There are uh, uh, to give um, credit to everybody. There were people, but we we really wanted somebody to come out and say, you know, uh, give me this little. Uh, I, I'm here. I'm providing you pure, trusted milk, and this is how we do it, right? So we wanted to be that authentic source of milk that the that the customers uh, that somebody could really trust. So this started. Sids Farm is a promise from me. to my son siddarth saying that we'll only produce the best milk possible we won't we don't we won't do anything less right if we cannot do it we won't we won't sell milk but if we do we'll only produce the best milk possible in the world right that is how our journey started and that is we that is what we do every day this is what we strive to achieve every day and uh, uh, and our story is of how we overcome uh, the challenges right um Uh, when i started uh, we had some money to begin with but believe me the money went away fast right you buy you buy uh, 40 cows and all the money is gone right and then we really figured out uh, that we had to innovate uh, in in a in a low cost way uh, we had to really innovate on a lot of things to make sure we survived it right so that, that is how you know we started with a small dairy farm uh, um, Uh, in uh, in the outskirts of Hyderabad, uh, uh, because we felt there was uh, uh, widespread uh, milk and food illiteracy in the country. So, if you look at some reports, um, uh, uh, you can you, you, you have um, people talking about all sorts of illiteracy. Some of it is hype, but some of it is real, right? Um, uh, there are uh, thickeners that are present in milk. There are uh, and the Uh, thickeners ranging from urea sugar glucose um, you know various sorts of uh, uh, fat and essence of enhancers and then there are also widespread uh, uh, use of antibiotics uh, uh, in milk which is equally harmful right so this is the problem that we we, we set out to solve and uh, uh, we'll go to the solution slide the next slide yes so um so i'll spend a lot of time here um, um, because this is years of journey getting he- uh, getting to here so as i said we first started with our small uh, model dairy farm uh, right and then uh, when we got to about 50 to 60 animals we figured out that you know um, there were a lot of farmers from our neighboring villages who were approaching us they were saying um, uh, kishor why why don't you take our milk as well and uh, sell our milk too right maybe maybe i'll rewind a little bit you know we 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 started producing our milk and we went and went to sell this milk outside and uh, we realized that we were getting very little money for, for the milk that we were producing we were hardly getting 20 to 30 rupees per liter uh, not even 30 rupees we were getting I, i should say less than 20 rupees per every liter that we were producing at that point we decided since it was our goal anyway to produce uh, good milk and and deliver it direct we started delivering milk direct to customers so we started with about 10 customers first uh, and uh, we started supplying milk direct to customers um, and uh, as uh, our customers grew we started adding um, uh, we started buying more animals and we started producing more milk so our journey started used to start at 4 o'clock in the mor- morning 4 to 5 we used to milk our cows um, uh, 5 to uh, 6 we used to hand pack it 5 to 5:30 we used to hand pack it our milk and um, you, you know uh, 5:30 to 6:30 we used to deliver it in an auto in the city right and then as our milk started expanding um, that 4 became 3:30 in the morning 3:30 became uh, 3 3 uh, became 2:30 2 we were at one point we were waking up as early as 2 in the morning you know um, uh, waking all the people up and then milking our cows and uh, you know uh, packing it with hand packing machines and then we uh, moved on to automatic packing machine and uh, we were delivering it uh, uh, early in the morning we, we were doing this twice a day uh, once in the morning and once in the evening uh, and that is how we did for the first one year And then we quickly realized that uh, the importance of uh, uh, you know uh, chilling milk, uh, um, and then we put we put together a small pasteurization facility. Uh, we purchased a small pasteurization facility uh, from Pune, and uh, we put it together, and uh, we started uh, sending uh, uh, pasteurized chilled milk to our customers. 
Uh, then uh, interesting uh, things started to happen. The farmers around also started noticing, right? Farmers who wrote me off saying that this is some lunatic coming from somewhere and doing uh, crazy things. Uh, I mean, they started approaching and said, why don't uh, you take our milk and uh, do the same as well and, and give us a, a good price for the milk. That is how our journey with farmers started. So we started onboarding, uh, uh, we started onboarding uh, groups of farmers and uh, 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 and uh, then the, the next problem that you re realized is we wanted to make sure their milk was good right so uh, we started with simple testing uh, we we bought a few nddb test kits uh, uh, and uh, we started testing milk for different parameters uh, and then we quickly re uh, uh, then we also started doing some more antibiotic testing we quickly realized that the cost of testing was becoming higher and higher um, uh, so we got down to the FSSA manuals um, and uh, we started slowly developing our own reagents. So that reduced the cost of our testing. Today, um, uh, we make our all, all of our own reagents uh, ourselves in our laboratory. Um, we do uh, over 2000 tests daily on our milk. So every adult trend that can be possibly there, uh, um, I mean, the information is all out there in FSSA uh, test methods. We develop we develop those reagents in house and test every batch of milk, right? Uh, an average uh, we look for uh, three classes of uh, we look for at least ten different adult trends. We look for three classes of antibiotics. We look at uh, aflatoxins present in milk. We also test for oxytocin, right? And this milk uh, today we have about a thousand farmers we work with. Uh, uh, this milk uh, uh, tested milk. Uh, we direct deliver it to our customers via an app, right? Uh, so there's an entire uh, city and distribution that happens. We, we work with a network of 160 delivery partners who deliver our milk direct to customers over an app. Right? Um, and an important thing that uh, we do also is, as you're doing this, uh, one way we connect with our customers is through dairy and agro-tourism. We invite a lot of our customers every Saturday to the farm. Uh, we've done even nighttime stargazing events at the farm. Uh, we, we, we pull in customers, we, we, we get uh, school kids, we get uh, uh, corporates, we get uh, uh, degree colleges, we get universities to come, visit our farm, show them how it is done, right? We start from milking a cow. Uh, uh, we start from milking a cow, we show kids how to milk a cow, and then how that milk travels from there to, the, uh, to our main processing line. Right, the entire process is, uh, is shown to a customer, right? Um, starting from testing, right? So we we are a truly transparent uh, organization that uh, that any time a customer can walk in with a prior appointment, we will show the entire process line to them. Right? So starting from how do we test, right? Why do we test? How, how does adulteration creep? Right? We show them the entire uh, uh, journey to our customer. So uh, coming. Uh, so this is a little bit about our story. So I want to talk about why does adulteration happen in the first place, right? So observing data uh, for the past, I would say five, uh, six years, some of the learnings uh, 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 here is, you know, first let me talk about what is adulteration in milk. My understanding, our understanding, our simple understanding of what is adulteration, right? So either uh, uh, preservatives or thickeners are used. Uh, uh, it could be sugar, salt, urea, hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, any sort of neutralizers. And then there are antibiotics, uh, tetracyclines, beta lactams, sulfonimides, um, and then also oxytocin uh, presented. Also oxytocin that is used to boost the milk productivity. Okay. This is a different type of adulteration. If you can go to the next slide, please. Yes. So, um, uh, as I was asking, why does it happen in the first place? Uh, the, uh, one of the key things that we observe is there's not enough money to a dairy farmer, right? Uh, and if, even if there is uh, enough uh, money declared uh, uh, by a cooperative or a, or a private company, what we find is uh, often there are malpractices in farmer pricing. What, what a farmer gets ultimately is not what he should be getting, right? This is one thing the, that uh, we see in a lot of places as you go to more and more rural areas away from urban centers, we feel that there's a lot of uh, mal uh, practices and farmer pricing. The second uh, issue is 
inefficient and uh, missing uh, uh, chilling infrastructure these are the two primary reasons why uh, uh, thickeners or preservatives come into milk in the first place right because of inefficient uh, chilling infrastructure uh, hydrogen peroxide is the first adulterant that comes into milk right the second adulterant is a neutralizer because the milk is about to split uh, uh, because do the cutta ho jara acidity in the milk is increasing uh, neutralizer like baking soda or caustic soda are added to milk this is a common uh, 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 adulteration that we find the other adulteration is the farmer is just not getting enough price you know um, uh, farmers tend to uh, adulter with either sugar uh, maida or salt these are common uh, uh, adulterations that we that we find uh, in farmers the next one really is antibiotic usage or hormonal usage right here um, see the animals fall sick the animals fall sick and they have to be treated with antibiotics uh, how we solve this issue is we tell the farmer if you have to uh, treat an, uh, an animal with an antibiotic you just let us know you separate the milk to us and give it to us we give them different colored cans so the farmer can separate that antibiotic milk and give only the milk that does not have an antibiotic here we work very closely with the farmer we educate them uh, uh, and uh, uh, and we don't do not penalize them as long as they tell us that uh, a, a, a small batch of milk is uh, has antibiotic in it we don't penalize them so the farmer still gets his price for all the milk uh that is how we separate out the antibiotic milk. so this is a way to encourage good practices um, we also tell them we all, we show them a bottle of uh, uh, antibiotic injection and say uh, you know the withdrawal period is 5 to 7 days what it means is you're not supposed to be drinking this milk if you give this uh, uh, antibiotic injection right? so uh, we do a lot of education with the farmers are uh, we have a team of about 10 to 12 extension staff who actively go to villages show them uh, first is test 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 Uh, we test to make sure we we find uh, we find out uh, anything that could be present in milk then we go and educate and make sure this, those practices uh, uh, go away right we truly believe right at sense farm we truly believe all of our staff we truly believe our small indian farmer produces the best milk in the world he takes care of his house he grazes them he he treats them as his own uh, right if we can solve these few issues right with making sure the chilling infrastructure is very close to the farmer um, uh, and we are paying them fairly right uh, and we educate them about uh, antibiotic usage and oxytocin usage we can prevent these we can stop them from happening and uh, we can produce the uh, uh, we can capture and get the best milk that is already being produced if we go to the next slide and uh, as i talked about we do a lot of testing we focus a lot on testing starting from a small uh, room today we have a uh, a 1200 square feet i think about a 1000 uh, square feet facility where all we do is just test right every batch of milk gets tested first for uh, adulterants and uh, uh, thickeners and adulterants right this happens both at the village center level as well as our uh, as our at our processing facility uh, uh, we 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 recently also started uh, uh, increasing the speed of the testing we use uh, indifos tools also along with uh, uh, chemical reagent based uh, testing then we do a lot of uh, strip based testing for antibiotics and aflatoxins here you see a picture uh, this is a strip based test where you have a control line the first line is a control line Uh, which is fairly visible then you have uh, three lines one for uh, the first line is for um, uh, uh, tetracyclines then the other line is for beta lactams and sulfonamides if you look at the second and third you see those uh, two lines not visible here what that tells you is that milk sample has those two classes of antibiotics present in them beta lactams and sulfonamides right so this is how uh, you know we uh screen uh, for antibiotics present in milk we also recently acquired a hplc to be able to test for uh, able to do uh, oxytocin testing also any protein analysis any anything else anything advanced we want to do we also recently acquired a hplc on the farmer farmer and how do we um, uh, uh 
how do we make sure you know uh, we are one we are paying a uh, good price to the farmer uh, the farmer also gets always gets to see what is what he is producing what he is getting right we, wherever there is technology we adopt it right there uh, stell labs nano dairy are uh, you know uh, uh, our pioneer stell labs is really a pioneer in this field so we work very actively uh, with uh, stell labs um and uh, uh, we have implemented those systems uh, we went one step further where we, where we are implementing a tool called moopay so this enables not only to look at the farmer pouring history but also be ultimately be able to provide small micro loans to farmers uh, based on their pouring history and also provide veterinary services and other other value added services to the farmers so we 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 started this in a group of 13 villages in shatnagar and uh, uh, slowly we'll start to see uh, hopefully benefits come, going out to the farmers in the next uh, um, in the next few months on this also actively we are ad adopting in instant milk chilling systems we are taking them very close to the uh, farmer and village centers and uh, we are uh, investing a uh, good amount of money on these uh, instant milk chilling systems um so this is how on the farmer and we are leveraging technology on the customer side which is a very very important uh, side um, see because ultimately the customer is paying us the money for it right so we make sure that we are every day in the morning customer gets his milk on time customer gets pure milk on time if a customer ever has a doubt about what he is getting uh, our one of our quality associates in the city goes out to the, reaches out to the customer goes and test the milk in their presence at his home right uh, a drdo test kit or an ndb uh, test kit along with an nddb or a drdo test kit our uh, our our quality associate goes to the farmer talks to them shows them how testing is done and uh, uh, and we uh, we show our customers that indeed we are producing pure milk right um, we we work with a, uh, we have about 160 delivery partners who every day in the morning from 4 to 8 in the morning they are actively delivering their milk and with technology we uh, we are looking at how they are doing their deliveries so starting from uh, if a customer does not uh, receive milk on time we are actively looking at you know um, so we we do fresh test whatsapp uh, and ivr integration as soon as a call comes a quality uh, a ticket is raised um, and we will actively look at how soon we are we are uh, we resolve that issue uh, when a whatsapp message comes uh, requesting uh, some help from the customer side we measure how soon we are responding to it so we use technology wherever uh, possible to make sure we provide the best possible uh, support to the customer right um, on the first dashboard if you look at it this is a quality dashboard uh, one good thing about talking to customers directly delivering to direct is we get instant feedback anything that we try to do if you're trying if we are developing a new paneer uh, recipe or uh, right we get instantaneous feedback next day morning the customer calls us and tells us this is good this is not good so we very act we actively look at uh, 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 what the customer is telling us for example in this dashboard in a particular uh, week um, the quality assurance dashboard we look at how many customers are complained about maybe buffalo milk splitting uh maybe uh, some uh, uh, because of a distribution issue if there are anything uh, uh, any issues right uh, see over a week uh, uh, we do about uh, 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 30000 skus a do 30 30000 skus a day uh, when i say sku it it uh, it is a uh, uh, half liter packet Uh, the number of issues we track uh, uh, there are about 80 right then we slice and dice to see uh, where are those majority of the issues com uh, coming from typically what we see is we get more uh, buffalo milk issues because we provide high fat uh, buffalo milk we only do whole milks typically so and in that buffalo milk uh, uh, we get a bigger share of issues from buffalo milk so we understand what what could have happened is it a delivery issue is it a chilling issue we want try to understand it and and, and solve it Um, our customer gets a replacement packet instantaneously. Uh, a, a backup delivery boy goes out and uh, 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 provides a replacement packet. Then we go back and understand, uh, you know, why it happened in the first place. Right. Um, uh, so this, in nutshell, is how we do our business, and we are constantly looking at new tools. Uh, uh, and wherever we need to invest in technology, we are looking at investing in that. Wherever the technology is already available, we look we look to adopt uh, that technology, pay for that technology, lease that technology, 
uh, and learn uh, uh, and learn and implement it. This this is all I have. If there are any questions, I would love to take. Uh, uh, Dr. Kishore, it would be great if you can share about uh, your products as well as the agro tourism which you're doing. Okay. If we could push to the uh, third slide, please. Uh, Right. Yeah, the next one, please. So, um, yes, so the, today we do, uh, uh, I'll start with the products. The, uh, we do whole cow milk. Uh, when we say whole cow milk, what we sell is, is, uh, is minimally processed. We do basic pasteurization of milk. We don't do homogenization. Uh, 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 we, do base, uh, we do pasteurized whole cow milk. We do pasteurized uh, buffalo milk. Uh, we do paneer. Uh, when we do paneer, uh, we, we break our paneer only with either curd or lime. Uh, uh, we don't use either citric acid or any of the other commercially available things. We, we only use uh, uh, two or three ingredients and only natural ingredients we use. Right? Uh, uh, we also do ghee. Uh, uh, some of the products are displayed here. Uh, ghee, uh, we also try to churn it in the traditional process and manufacture ghee. We also do it in the traditional way. Right. We, we also we do cow ghee separately and buffalo ghee separately. And some of the new products that we are doing uh, are uh, we are we would be launching uh, cow curd separately and buffalo curd separately. Today, that is something that you don't find in the market. You, you find curd that is either uh, it's mixed curd. It could be mixed with buffalo or cow. So we're doing uh, uh, cow curds and buffalo curd. Uh, we're doing cow butter and buffalo butter. We're doing uh, uh, simple products today. Uh, 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 there are maybe one or two ingredients at the most. Right? We, we, we see that there is a lot of demand for those and, and that is what we, we are trying to, that is, that is the market that we are trying to address today. Uh, and uh, the, the picture above, this shows um, uh, about the uh, agro-tourism agro uh, that we do. We have a four acre uh, farm uh, uh, on the outskirts of Hyderabad, about 55 kilometers from, this, uh, from Hyderabad city. This is where uh, adjoining to this adjoining to our farm is where our uh, pasteurization facility is also located. Um, so as I said, every Saturday uh, we we do an open house. Customers can walk in into our facility from three to seven in the evening. Right. So uh, we start with milking a cow. Uh, we do uh, we let the customers taste all of our products there uh, in the farm on the farm side, and then we show them milking. We get kids interested in milking a cow. And as they're doing that, uh, uh, then uh, we walk them through our uh, grass fields first. We show them how the grass is grown. Then we also give them a little bit of education about ajola. We show them what ajola is. Right? This is something I'm not talked about. We do this with our farmers. Right? We do ajola ponds for our farmers. Um, uh, typically, this uh, this pond that you see costs us 1500 rupees. If a farmer is interested in this, so we do it for them and we cut them 50 rupees per uh, per billing cycle. Right. It's just a, 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 a tarpaulin sheet with a brick uh, that is put up, uh, and we show them how to do achwala. We also do. We also grow four types of uh, uh, tree fodders like uh, uh, subabul, sasbania, uh, gliricidia, and moringa. We, we grow four types of uh, tree fodders. We uh, we tell customers as well as farmers the importance of growing tree fodders that can reduce the cost of uh, uh, that can reduce the cost of uh, your feed itself. Uh, feed or dana and then uh, we give customers uh, 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 in a tractor we show them uh, entire grass growing operations right um, we uh, our own farm we do about uh, close to 60 acres of uh, grass growing activity we we take them to one field uh, where the customers get an idea of you know how grass is grown what is re uh, what kind of grasses the animals eat then we slowly bring them into the lab first we show them all there is to uh, uh, Test milk. We show them, we tell them why milk is chilled in the first place, right? We talk about bacteria and what happens if you don't chill. So we do a lot, of, we got a lot of questions about preservatives. Customers feel that if you, uh, uh, if you packet milk, uh, it should have preservatives. We'll, we'll, we tell them it is not true. All you have to do is chill milk in time. If you chill milk in time, there is no need to add any preservative. 
in fact i tell them in the west uh, you know just chilled uh, uh, milk has a shelf life of 7 days in india we only give a shelf life of 1 day right um, yeah, right but if you chill milk on time if you uh, do chilling at the source you, you can in fact have a shelf life of about 7 days without any preservatives we start with that we show them how we test milk we actually go through all the color based uh, um, uh, chemical uh, reagent uh, 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 detection we show them how to do urea test in fact we have uh, a, a youtube channel where all the tests that uh, we uh, we put them on our youtube channel where all the tests are actually we have done and demonstrated anybody can try and do it um, then we go through antibiotic testing we uh, we show them antibiotic testing we give them a tour of our uh, uh, hplc uh, room as well and then uh, uh, we go on to the milk processing uh, stage we show them how milk goes from first chilling step then to the pasteurization step then how the pack- packaging is done and how it sits uh, sits in the cold room and then eventually from there uh, how the milk is dispatched from there to our uh, distribution centers in the city right we show we, we show them the entire uh, process and in addition to this we do we uh, we do uh, sometimes night uh, camping events at the farm so we invite people to come to the farm spend a night Uh, uh, this to do we do it with a, a small groups of people because we don't want to uh, overcrowd so we invite uh, people to the farm they spend some time they, they bring their musical instruments and stuff uh, and uh, uh, they come down uh, they get to spend some time and uh, you know maybe uh, uh, graze at the stars we have had people who brought in their telescopes and stuff uh, and uh, spend some uh, time maybe do a little bit of barbecuing and uh, spend their evening there we have done that for six times we uh, in the past few months because of corona we have stopped this activity we are looking to as soon as the vaccination starts to happen across the country we are looking at uh, reviving uh, uh, the uh, the farm tours uh, again uh, within a few months sorry that was an elo- uh, elaborate answer hopefully i answered uh, your question uh no sir that was a truly really amazing uh, you know presentation we've got to know about your product and you know as well as agro tourism and the meanwhile like in uh, just uh, show a video of your uh, you know milk testing in the youtube channel so that would be you know a bit uh, natural for them also sure we we shot some of these videos uh, you know just in case a customer is interested um, uh, uh, for uh, customers um, we typically um, uh, send them if they have any questions on the testing itself we send them either one of the drdo approved uh, uh, test kits or uh, some of the there is a company called verai pure uh, that is manufacturing some uh, test kits we send them those those are available on amazon as well so we recommend those things so this is a 60% 80% alcohol test that uh, our uh, team is demonstrating we shot some of these videos on the farm side so that's why it's a little bit dark so we could get good quality uh, videos
and uh, we are proud to say right our team is proud to say a lot of the guys that you are doing these guys are or are, uh, are from the local villages around right we we, we provided employment to some of these people um, uh, these guys are proud of their jobs they are learning new skills um, uh, they have done uh, bscs uh, uh, in microbiology and stuff but um, um, but i think we've been able to provide uh, some local jobs uh, around the factory for these guys as well We have, we have have about uh, ten to twelve such videos uh, that we posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, Kaushik, I, I don't know how we are doing on time. I think I see a lot of questions also that are coming up in chat. Um, if you are good on time, I'm I'm good. Uh, Uh, we are good on time, sir, and we also have the Q and A session in the last, like around five forty. Okay. So that should be good. So, awesome. thank you. Yes. See. so starting uh, um, uh, with about uh, i would say about 10 people including milking labor uh, today we uh, sits farm supports uh, about uh, uh, about 110 people in the office and the plant side and about we work with about uh, we provide uh, employment about 160 delivery boys and uh, and a fleet of uh, uh, i would say impact wise about uh, Uh, about 300 of people or so we directly provide uh, uh, salaries or wages in one form or the other and uh, we work with a lot of farmers um, uh, uh, about uh, 1200 or so uh, right now uh, our goal is to make sure some of the benefit uh, that receive uh, that we receive from the customer we we want to pass it on to the farmer as well so we coming out with new incentive schemes as well um, farmers who stay with us for a long time have consistently given us good quality milk we want to increase their Uh, uh, the uh, the money that they earn with us as well. so in the next few years uh, we we plan on working actively in that direction here uh, you can see that milk uh, uh, is starting to split right that is how we assess whether the milk has passed that 80% uh, test or not uh, the 80% alcohol test uh, gives us a sh uh, idea of the shelf life of milk i think uh, this way i think uh, audience would really connect to the you know, product much more and uh, thank you for your session and uh, we shall go for the second speaker so uh, let us uh, just check out once before we start on the second speaker yeah and uh, a second speaker for today is dr ashish kumar singh who is a principal scientist food science and technology and incubator business planning and development unit icar national dairy research institute 
an active researcher and an academician in the area of food science and technology working in the field of composite dairy foods development of technological packages for novel dairy foods uh, dr ashish kumar singh has done his phd in gb pant university of agriculture and technology and also a couple of awards with uh, icar bharat ratna dr c subramanian award for outstanding teachers 2015 in natural resource management and agricultural engineering from Indian Council of Agricultural Research also SK Sirohi Memorial Award for Young Researcher I request uh, Dr Ashish Kumar Singh to start his session thank you uh dr ashish kumar singh is the in phone now is about to get on board in the meanwhile we can go with the questions uh, from the chat box for uh, six i mean six part which are in the pool. presentation uh, i think uh, yeah dr ashish kumar singh has joined the session sorry uh, dr kishor we will go with the q and a in the last thank you sure. for that yes sir uh, you can start your session sir thank you Uh, Mr. Shiro, I have not shared presentation. Uh, shall I share on my side, sir? Uh, here. Uh, yeah. Please me to share my presentation. Okay, sir. I'll share my, uh, share the presentation from my side. Will be done, then it will be difficult for me to make changes. I hope is it uh, it's visible, sir. It's visible, but the problem is like you know, I have to tell you every time you change the slide, change the slide. So. If you authorize me, the... then I will be able to. Yeah. Uh, okay, sir. Um, let me check that. Basically, when you go on the share screen, or else I'll make you present it. Sir. One second. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, now. Okay. okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. There is some issue is still it's better that you uh, you know share from the that side only okay sir i'll share from my side sir Um, I don't see the share button, sir. Uh, you can start the presentation. Meanwhile, uh, I'll just uh, share it in, okay. in a while. Sir. Okay. 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 So very good uh, afternoon. Uh, I will discuss uh, in brief about you know the entrepreneurship opportunities in dairy sector and basically uh, which is related to the production farming and my major focus will be on value addition. Uh, so my job has been made uh, much easier by uh, the previous speaker who has uh, narrated uh, very beautifully you know about the success story of his farm and basically what i also wanted to convey that exactly there what kind of opportunities are existing in dairy farming particularly so you know we all know about the success story of uh, indian milk sector dairy sector and we are the topmost producer 
and by the end of this year means the last year uh, the production has reached to around 190 metric ton probably this is uh, a figure which is for, for which you know most of the people are not aware that in our food basket milk is the third largest agricultural agro commodity after the rice and wheat and this success story involved around 15 million farmer families which are linked through the strong network of more than 1 lakh village dairy cooperative although we say that uh, it is the corporate or a mole pattern has brought the uh, white revolution but the real fact is that only you know around eight to nine percent of the milk is handled by the dairy sector we understand we know the role what uh, uh, dairy sector is or livestock sector is playing as far as the socio-economic development, rural employment generation opportunities, and providing quality nutrition. In fact, around 15% of the nutri protein in the urban as well as rural diet comes from the dairy milk and milk product. As far as the Indian dairy sector scenario is concerned, uh, we are uh, means among the various food processing sector. This is having the highest rate of uh, level of processing. If you compare with fruits or vegetables or milk or fisheries. And another important thing is that around most of the dairy products are growing at a growth rate of around 15 to 20 percent. And but the you know sorry figure as far as our dairy sector is concerned is that we have a very negligible presence, less than two percent in the international market. And this is despite the fact uh, you know that we are we are having around 20 percent of the global share in the global milk production. And if you look at the locational advantage, we are not able to tap that locational advantage because we are surrounded by most of the countries which are deficient in milk whether it is sark nation middle east or down south africa or asian which could be a very uh, positive you know which could be a very promising areas as far as indian dairy product is concerned coming to the vision 2050 that by 2050 it is presumed that we will be the most populous uh, nation on the uh, globe and we will figure among the top three economy and to continue the, our contribution of the agriculture sector uh, to the national GDP, dairy sector has to grow at a growth rate of around 5.6%. And currently, uh, this is a kind of, you know, it, 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 this figure is around 6%. And in that scenario, it will be more entrepreneur profit. Okay, because what people are preferring, that people are preferring towards more uh, kind of organized milk processing. It's a driving forces which we can foresee and the kind of challenges which we also visualize but that we have to youth which is uh, more health conscious uh, and also you know prefer to experiment new kind of food products at the same time, the changes include the increased food fee and for demand. And already we have a degradation, climate change, uh, and that is climate change will affect the milk productivity. Will also pose problems in the form of new uh, pathogens or microorganisms. And already, you know, some uh, positive sides are like slow growth in farm income. So people are looking for diversification. Changes in dietary preferences and global trade regulation will offer newer opportunities in the international market. Then uh, the gist of my presentation is that how to address the, you know, uh, the milk supply chain or value addition component. And in this regard, uh, there are four different types of milk supply chain exist. Hardly producer get opportunity to directly sell its product to the consumer. Then there are, you know, number of other chains is having number of intermediaries and when there are issues of intermediaries the problem comes in the form of like adulteration the poor return to the milk producer and also consumers are not getting the good quality milk when many times when people ask about the quality of milk probably you know only one thing which comes to our mind is that uh, it's freedom from all kind of adulterant no it's not only this but there are many other quality challenges like because of the tropical tropical climate or milk is bound to have very high microbiological count and so, so far we have to resort for our you know we have to adopt a clean milk production strategies there are number of genosis genosis means uh, you know the micro or the diseases causing agents or pathogens which can transmit from animal product to human being 
so there are more than 20 different types of uh, you know uh, genetic diseases which Twenty-five percent issues like minerals, like pesticide, antibiotic residues, uh, heavy metals. Then uh, most of the many times, you know, we don't give due consideration regarding the time-temperature combination because the major kind of commodity which we uh, get from the commercial sector is the liquid milk, and forty-five percent of the milk which is produced in country is consumed as liquid milk, but only 33.4% is packed. So that means, you know, it's still a sizable chunk of our population prefer uh, chilled, but good quality milk at their doorstep. So, uh, you know, how we can support, what strategic interventions are required and basically our programs or EDP programs or entrepreneurs uh, supporting programs are basically revolving around these challenges that we have, uh, a lot of technologies are available in different R&D organization institution. But when it comes to the how many people are aware of technologies, okay, then many technologies which we developed as scientists, I, I, I don't hesitate to accept it, that uh, most of these technologies In the, you know, potential under the field conditions, and that is the reason why you know defining part of the technology uh, is uh, very poorly conceptualized, and that is the reason when it comes so many promising technologies don't see the uh, you know commercial uh, component. Then majority of fiscal development programs are basically lack qualitative improvement among the trainees and con and convinced without uh, conceived without you know clear goals lack of institutional support we all agree then there is also farmers and generally the entrepreneurs they don't have much information regarding the effective marketing technology tra transfer and entrepreneurship strategies and since the sector is you know or for that matter our most of the agriculture sector is comes in the domain of unorganized sector so how we can transform it to a successful uh, commercial venture so there are a number of options like dairy farm as enterprise and probably after uh, the presentation of my previous speaker, I don't have much to say about it. But the thing is that if you adopt the scientific management, dairy farming management practices as whether it urban, so like very urban kind of dairy sector or it can be from the rural side also. So there are a lot of scope because still the liquid milk is the first you know the preferred kind of commodity which consumers are looking for but they also want a quality milk then uh, we can also make dairy farming more lucrative or satisfying by involving the small holders you know there are many times a debate comes whether we can sustain uh, the growth of dairy sector with the existing pattern or whether we have to switch over towards the more organized kind of dairy farm what kind of system can sustain but the thing is now uh, that uh, small holders have to come together because cooperative, we have seen the cooperative is successful only in certain states or certain geographical reasons. There are a number of issues why they are not successful, but the self-help group model, milk producer union uh, kind of model is, could be, you know, one of the alternative. Then uh, another thing is like uh, country is also facing a lot of uh, problem in terms of like good quality animal animal in terms of uh, like you know milk production productivity point of view so many of these dairy farms and especially if you look at the business model which is prevailing in states like punjab and haryana here the farmers are not very much concerned about the milk as a you know for their uh, revenue pattern in the revenue pattern but they uh, breed animals and sell these animals so why not uh, to convert your farm or part of your farm as a breeding farm. And for that, you have to learn, and there are a number of scope. You, know, you can supply the germplasm in the form of semen. You can also uh, provide good quality animals to the users. And another thing is that waste, which is generated in the dairy farm, it's, uh, is not properly you know, handled. So it can also be a part of our overall, you know, like, uh, 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 our revenue model kind of system and there are number of success story if you go through the youtube you can interact with many 
already you know uh, 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 people who are already into into this business that they have uh, they have utilized it for the bio fertilizer production for biogas production for the electricity generation and also for manure generation especially in uh, in this northern part i have seen number of farmers what they are doing they are simply you know converting them into the vermi compost and selling it to the orchards which are located in himachal pradesh so these are some you know approaches where we have to go for and normally uh, visually i what we prefer is that a kind of sandwich model where you follow the traditional system as well as modern modern system also uh, one success story which i would like to share here is uh, of two uh, you know a couple from uh, um, rajasthan jaipur so they have a farm so after you know completing their dairy farming training in our institute they uh, we enrolled them as an incubating company and then they uh, established a farm which is of gir animals so now nowadays there is a lot of focus on the indigenous breeds okay so not only their conservation but the kind of milk so there are several reasons i would not like to go into the you know like uh, the debate of a1 a2 kind of milk but they have used uh, this strategy and they are, whatever milk they produce they have uh, uh, you know simply chilled it uh, filled it into the or packaged into the gabel topping you know bottles and then they are, they have started supplying it to jaipur uh, in gurgaon uh, south delhi noida and even to mumbai by you know uh, delhi so they currently their annual turnover is around 3 crore rupees only by the milk which they produce and all converting it into the traditional kind of ghee also and apart from that they have got, uh, received a fund from the rajasthan uh, government to establish a gear breeding farm and they have currently around uh, 300 animals in their farm another opportunity apart from dairy farm is in the feed and fodder so almost you know 60 65% of the cost which comes to the animal rearing is in the milk uh, in the feed and fodder and uh, uh, currently there is a stiff competition between the food crops and fodder crops so definitely we have to look for those kind of alternative technologies where we can convert either the farm processing or you know the crop residues into more uh, nutritious kind of uh, uh, you know products so a lot of technologies have come up uh, and one such technology is very becoming very popular is in the silage and hay production also so uh, where the green fodder are convert is converted into silage it can be preserved even even during the off season and uh, you know improve the nutritional value so other areas where instead of establishing a dairy farm why not to if you have a land you you can uh, you know so you can make silage uh, trust and can supply it you can also enter the, into the areas of like mineral mixture which are very area specific kind of mineral mixture feed supplement feed additive composite feed block especially is good for organized kind of dairy farm or the areas uh, like hilly tracks and also nowadays there is a lot of uh, emphasis on dairy uh, the balancing of the dairy ration so you know how much animal is required that can be so there are a number of you know uh, programs uh, computer software programs which you can work with the farming community to optimize that this particular your this particular animal is requiring you know only these 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 are components in, in the ration so this that is the area where uh, one can venture into especially the the people from the software industry and they can also you know uh, take up it as it uh, as a kind of business model for them so one such success story i would like to discuss here is a company called uh, brand name is nutrimeal this is silage agro private limited located in rajpura so these are uh, you know this is company was established by four engineering graduates from the thapar institute of engineering technology patiala so uh, they collaborated with the pioneer and pioneer is having some major varieties which is food so they you know with our uh, support uh, we provided them inoculum and so you know evaluated different uh, fodder varieties not only of uh, the corn but other like you know there are some hybrid crops also hybrid variety fodder crops also and even the sugar cane crop top so we worked on with them in development of technological part how to convert or how to produce good quality you know silage which will have not only good in terms of nutritional value but of having larger shelf life 
so they started their business and currently their product is uh, you know corn silage is uh, is available in around 18 different states of the country and they have uh, uh, so we are continuously supporting them as an incubating company now they are graduated and their currently turnover is around 15 to 20 crore between these this particular range depending less last year it was slightly lower because of the you know covid uh, component then <clears throat> the area which i would like to discuss is the value addition and probably if you look at these kind of uh, operations which we do at the home whether it is uh, you know butter manufacturing or poa or chana or paneer making at the home probably this is something not very alien for the people but uh, you know uh, these instead of selling the liquid milk because liquid milk is no more a kind of profitable venture so if you have established a dairy farm or if you have started a milk collection center uh, or pasteurization uh, unit then uh, it cannot sustain for a long so definitely you have to add number of process product and when it comes to the technology part i always say you know you always make your wife or sister or mother as your technical partner in your business because they are well versed with these kind of operations okay and they also know how to innovate it and basically when we talk about the value addition you know innovation diversification and health these are the three important component of current, uh, if you look at the current consumer scenario, which is important. Another uh, area which probably uh, as an entrepreneur you have to look for is the kind of packaging system, okay? Because uh, we started with traditional steel containers, switched over to glass bottles, but, but again, with, due to the higher breakage, you know, it has been transformed into the form of like polypack but realizing the havoc created by these plastic films uh, like companies are switching over to tetra packs but they are very costly but if you look at the you know compare if you compare with the pasteurized milk and the tetra pack milk you will find in all regards this tetra pack is in even in terms of like economy it is more economical if we talk in the larger context of the you know environment sustainability also okay so again people are switching over to glass bottles especially the small scale you know milk producers what they are doing they are trans you know packaging the, in the glass bottles after chilling and then transporting into the uh, directly at the doorsteps of consumer one area which is uh, probably uh, even that at the dairy farm people can start is the micronutrient addition so milk although it is considered to be a complete food but still when we remove cream from it or when we subject it to pasteurization there are losses of certain you know fat soluble vitamins moreover milk is also deficient in iron in our institute we have developed a technology to fortify cal calcium iron vitamin a and vitamin d into the milk and that uh, could be a kind of premium brand because not no such company is existing and whatever approach they are following is slightly different for example many companies what they do they are adding milk powder into it increasing the calcium content and marketing it as a calcium enriched whereas our approach you know is based on the addition of those salts which do not affect the overall quality of the milk its thermal stability and at the same same time is more bioavailable as compared to you know the other nutrient so probably this is one area where uh, a person or entrepreneur is having which is who is having you know milk pasteurization unit can easily uh, uh, add uh, in the range of its product the micronutrient fortified milk and milk products then many times you know, people ask that what which range of product i should start for all reasons, if you take two only two parameters, in terms of like how much investment is required, then another one is that what is the consumer base or market opportunity. So on, on these two scales, the traditional dairy product or indigenous dairy product like poa, poa based sweets, heat desiccated, acid products like chana, ghee, paneer, all these kind of products, definitely they are having, they require not much investment but having a large consumer base and that is the reason you know our own 35 percent of the milk which is produced in india is converted into traditional dairy product followed by dairy beverages so if you have pasteurized milk as i said fortified milk, you can also add 
flavored milk, innovative dairy product uh, beverages in combination with fruit, malt component, then frozen dairy product. Uh, but I would like to place now fermented milk product, especially because of their unique, you know, nutritional and therapeutic or health promoting, benefiting, you know, properties. So products like dahi, yogurt, lassi, yogurt drink, shrikhand, kwar, probiotic dairy products could be uh, added add into it. And cheeses are becoming popular, especially in the peri-urban kind of system, where you can add uh, cheeses uh, even at a small scale by using and for you know, a small scale manufacturer, we have uh, developed uh, protocols for a number of fresh variety of cheeses like mozzarella, feta, cottage and processed cheese, which is the largest uh, component in the cheese market in India. So that can be uh, that can be added. I never suggest anybody to venture into the directly, you know, dried milk and high value dairy ingredients like milk protein concentrate or whey products or lactose, colostrum, because these require a lot of investment. And the limit, there is very limited kind of market opportunity. For example, in case of SMP or skim milk powder, there are around more than 600 dairy plants which are only producing SMP. And again, we are getting a lot of uh, uh, dairy powder, uh, particularly from the oceanic countries, uh, which are, you know, dumb. Uh, so we are, producers are getting a lot of, you know, processors are getting a lot of competition for this, uh, this particular commodity. And when we talk about the traditional dairy product, if you look, there are a lot of shortcomings. And probably uh, you, we have any a new entrepreneur can work on or can understand the shortcomings of the unorganized sector and transform it into the organized one by using certain interventions about which I will discuss. Why this traditional dairy product? Because you know they are very much integ integrated part of our uh, social, religious, culture, or you know, uh, many of them are also getting gaining importance because of the unique nutritional value, uh, which is which is there, uh, there. And also, if you look at the in terms of like value terms, you know, this traditional dairy product market is almost three times bigger than the liquid milk market because the level of value addition in most of the product category ranges between hundred to two hundred percent. We know that uh, we have the largest population of diabetic people, we have the largest population of people suffering with car cardiovascular disease, and such, uh, in such population, there uh, is always you know, low demand for high calorie or high sugar or high fat product. But despite this fact, you know, our this traditional dairy product market is growing at a growth rate of around 15 to 20 percent per annum. If you look at the diversity, you know, there is a lot of products which are produced, traditional dairy products, which are produced by using different type of processing interventions. Some we call them as a primary process product, some we call a secondary process product. So at every step of processing, there is certain addition of value and also the longevity, means either you can keep them for longer period of time. Koa, you cannot keep them under at room temperature. Sweet, which is made by using koa, it can be kept for longer duration, maybe one week or 10 days or even if you go for a higher degree of desiccation, probably you can keep it at room temperature for a month together. So there are like, you know, there is great diversity and this is a time when we can introduce a product or sweet, uh, which is popular in the eastern part of the country to the western or northern or southern part, because people are uh, now preferring to experience new category of product. And this is uh, basically the hallmark or also uh, one of the important component of the business model in many established companies like Amul, a Mother Dairy, which, which keep on uh, adding new range of product into their product profile. Then prospective functional dairy product, and because now people are more, you know, uh, health conscious. So like fortified milk product, I say it, then nutritionally modified traditional dairy product, like, like you know, the using uh, sh sugar alternatives or fat alternatives. And when you remove sugar or fat from the formulation, it is very difficult to replicate the same or simulate the similar kind of product of their natural counterpart. But we have developed number of technologies, a uh, number of interventions by which we can uh, develop. You can have a product which looks, which uh, tastes, uh, or having you know attributes similar to the traditional uh, or natural counterpart. Probiotic dairy products, functional beverages, composite dairy products, where we can use a combination of non-dairy component like cereals, millets, uh, along with the milk and milk component, and many other specialized 
product which are based on non boiled milk or maybe targeting certain uh, you know specific consumer group maybe like infants or adolescents or maybe geriatric maybe you know only women specific kind of product so there is a whole range of product which can where uh, one can venture or one can enter into it there is also a lot of query comes so that's why i have made uh, this particular slide for this presentation is organic milk you know organic milk uh, in many ways it's a myth it's normally what people say you know any milk which is produced by the tradition our are organic no organic agriculture is altogether different uh, you know area <clears throat> and uh, if you don't get the premium price for the organic milk i i will never suggest anybody to venture into it moreover because you know for organic animal husbandry first you have to convert or get you know your uh, inputs from the organic agriculture so you have a dual you know challenge first you have to convert your agriculture into organic then uh, in, ad adopt all organic animal husbandry practices so a lot of products are already there i will not go into the you know debate or discussion but it, yes there are many you know niche market where this organic milk uh, is could be one of the um, you know uh, product which you can start with then another area is where uh, one can venture not only into the product but in the area of dietary supplement or maybe the pharmaceutical sector so what we call nutraceutical okay so dairy products could be a very uh, ideal kind of base material because if you look at the kind of compounds which are present in the milk or their digestive product they have ability to modulate almost all our body system whether it is a weight management heart health bone health mood memory cognitive ability immune defense digestive health dental health for there are number of molecules which can be sourced from the milk or milk protein or milk fat okay and we have already you know many other institutes already have developed number of technologies how to fractionate isolate and make these products and generally these products are available uh, mostly they are imported one they are available many products for example lactoferrin mucobactipeptides you know like whey protein concentrate uh, gmp cla all these kind of compounds are available but the thing is these compounds are it's imported one and we have you know, a number of if you look at the number of species we have buffaloes we have uh, cows we have a uh, goat we have camel we have sheep we have donkey so all different kind of milk can be used for the production of these kind of dietary supplements and also you know like uh, uh, nutraceutical molecule it probably some of you may think of is non boiled milk because non boiled milk in all ways they are much superior as compared to the boiled milk Uh, and their because their compositional similarity is like human milk so if we don't have uh, you know uh, uh, like when mother milk is not available for feeding of infant uh, we can always recommend you know goat milk because it is having around 75 to 88% homology donkey milk is even further you know almost 90 to 95% homology with the uh, like you know uh, uh, with the mother milk and these milk are also good for people who are suffering with uh, very various kind of you know diseases uh, aged people so we have started working in this direction in our institute we are uh, in fact supporting many entrepreneurs not only in goat milk but also in camel milk so one of our entrepreneur that is our uh, incubate is advik Uh, which is into camel milk based chocolates camel milk powder goat milk powder and now we are working on camel and goat milk based cheeses uh, for the you know export market point of view then another area which is uh, could be a very promising is for especially for entrepreneur is the equipments dairy processing or food processing or packaging equipments and this could be a one our uh, you know strategy for uh, getting the make in india brand so in terms of like uh, uh mechanization part uh, one of the bottleneck uh, in for effective upgradation and large scale production of dairy product dairy uh, our traditional dairy product is lack of proper equipment so in our institute we have developed number of equipments and some and likewise similarly when there are many other organizations where they have developed 
the equipments uh, which can handle around 50 liters to as high as around 10,000 liters of milk per day. So these equipments, so any entrepreneur can also think of adopting or uh, utilizing these or, you know, uh, means venturing into the dairy processing or packaging equipment manufacturing unit. Otherwise, also, these equipments can also be utilized or can be applied by the uh, entrepreneur to, uh, you know, uh, for semi-mechanization part, like, you know, in, in, in for traditional dairy product manufacturing process line. For example, this is a kind of system, inline system, which we have developed in our institute, consists of a scrap surface resectanger for concentrating the milk, and it is also attached with the conical process weight. So in one batch around uh, per hour, you can handle around 200 liters of milk to convert into products like multiple range of products like poa, barfi, rabri, basundi, then uh, uh, ghee, uh, kheer, gajar pak. So you can make multiple range of product by using this kind of system. One thing which is always lacking in our traditional uh, milk or unorganized sector is packaging component. So packaging is not only a mean of containment, protection, convenience, where the designer part is more important, but uh, it is also more important a mean of communication. So nowadays, consumers are very much concerned about the nutritional path, what kind of ingredients are there, whether the ingredients are uh, veggie, vegetarian or non-vegetarian, whether the kind of packaging material is least recyclable or, or not. Or whether when you want to venture into or introduce your product in the retail market, definitely barcoding is very important. So this is one area where you have to give proper consideration, due consideration. So normally when we interact with the entrepreneurs, and this is these are the areas where we are currently working also, that most of the entrepreneur, they have a requirement for uh, equipments. So like whether we can get a process line for indigenous dairy product, whether we have a raw milk chilling from transportation or dispensing system, moreover, energy efficiency or, you know, resource uh, efficiency, resource optimization is another uh, important component when you have to get a proper, you know, return on your investment. So energy efficient kind of system, service system for small scale production, effective packaging line, especially for a smaller quantity of product and, you know, especially in the northern India, there is a lot of you know seasonality as far as the value added dairy products are concerned. So certain products are in great demand in one particular season and but not very much in demand. So what should be my product mix so that I can get the best return and I can sustain my uh, business throughout the year, then promotional schemes and, and availability of funds and loan for any business it is uh, this is the requirement okay then many times you know people ask that how i can connect with my customers so one can learn from the success story of a movie this company don't have much you know like uh, ads okay so only there are a limited number of uh, you know add on but they have a mool baby which is which comes in every day so you with the slogan Okay, so the only thing is how to connect. So in that regard, we always suggest you pub make a publication, you know, pamphlet uh, in your city. If you are dealing with the milk or dairy product, what you can you make a publicity brochure, ask the newspaper person, okay, distribute it to each and every whole household. Even if it is reaching to around 1000 household, probably 200, people will approach you for your product or talk to you about your product. So there are a number of ways by which marketing channels can be institutional catering, direct contracting with street manufacturers, milk booths in cities. You can also convert a vehicle into a kind of, you know, uh, uh, like wheel, uh, like a restaurant on wheel. You can uh, uh, take advantage of uh, highway tourism. Uh, you need not to have a process like packaging line for a number of dairy beverages, these kind of dispensing system for ice cream, soft serve ice cream, dairy beverages. These are, are currently available and uh, which you can use uh, it for you know, selling your product. Then I will discuss some of the success story and for different types of models. Like we have started uh, uh, working with some self-help group uh, in nearby villages of the Karnal where uh, we identified you know promising traditional dairy product training methods so you know for uh, especially the women farm women 
and uh, we interacted with these women uh, asked them whether you can call, collect surplus milk from each household or at least you know, from those households where people are willing to sell you uh, their product product so that you can get good quality raw material and then we trained them we trained them we also organized many you know camps in their villages regarding this uh, animal health and also animal management practices to these farm women and then uh, there was uh, we also imparted training regarding the quality assurance how to manufacture product at a small scale then interactive session problems problem solving kind of sessions we organized for a period of almost 3 months and these women were working as a laborer then they established anmol mahila dukh samiti and currently well this unit was established in 2012 and almost 8 years you know so these 16 farm women they manufacture different type of product and marketing in the karnal market similarly we have also assisted three four other you know uh, the self help group kind of uh, models in karnal and the nearby districts of districts of haryana then another uh, <coughs> group of farmer uh, around 300 dairy farmers they joined together they uh, formed a mishti farmer producer company so we supported them in on two aspect one is how to improve the milk productivity and for that we educated educate uh, catered them on kilimil production we provided them veterinary services we also provided them market for milk profit sharing so all these kind of models we have evolved for mishti farmer producer company and then we they purchased few of the technologies from our institute we uh, enrolled them as an incubator company <coughs> and they started their production from using our plant and machinery and currently they have their own uh, milk processing unit which is currently processing around 7500 milk which is collected from the 300 household small dairy farmers so with and having a turnover of around uh, 5 crore rupees per year per annum another entrepreneur as i said is advik milk food which is unique uh, uh, kind of uh, business model for camel and uh, goat milk so they have a number of products which we assisted them in development of camel uh, camel goat goat milk powder colostrum powder camel milk chocolate cheeses are under development and they they have a presence uh, not only in india but uh, overseas market especially in the middle east and now they are getting lot of queries especially from the Euro uh, european countries regarding the goat milk powder uh, another entrepreneur is an Indian uh, who is uh, who has established his venture in uh, Sydney, Australia, and uh, he learned uh, various kind of techniques uh, required for ma manufacturing of you know paneer and other traditional kind of dairy products by using the cow milk. So uh, he's also doing good. Uh, earlier he was having only one unit. Now he has established another unit in Sydney only. Uh, another entrepreneur uh, is in the health food segment and uh, because we are also assisting in the bakery and fruits and vegetables um, we have pilot plant for that also so we assisted him in development of fortified snacks every food nutritional bar and uh, their company is having a is brand name is hungry Fold, and uh, they have also been supported by the gas authority of india limited under their punk uh, program and uh, another entrepreneur is in millet based biscuits uh, he uh, started his journey from karnal over using our uh, technologies and our plant and machinery and currently operating at uh, indore producing around uh, 7 tons of product per day different type of biscuits and other bakery product in indore madhya pradesh uh, another entrepreneur is uh, you know we, is we assisted him in development of whey protein enriched fruit drinks and uh, uh, in that brand name of mocktail and then later on he diversified into various kind of traditional drinks of the western india uh, food based or dairy based so currently he's uh, into this particular business then another area is especially for the science graduate is you know diagnostic or rapid detection kits so uh, we have developed number of technologies for adult trained for uh, you know antibiotic residue pesticide residue even heavy metal uh, at the farm, like at the point of collection. And two of our students, they purchased uh, initially a technology for maltodextrin detection in the bulk. Okay, and then um, a company called Delmos Private India Limited, Gurgaon. And uh, they have reached to an annual turnover of around 2.5 crore last year, you know, they have achieved. 
uh, and nowadays they have around uh, uh, six products in their technology basket uh, which they are offering and uh, now so this is about the some of the success story and opportunities now how our unit or how may our technology business incubator basically assist the budding entrepreneurs so we work on training part to start with the training offer consultancy uh, enroll uh, promising entrepreneur under business incubation program offer testing facility as a outsourcing hub and also supply of day various kind of inputs ipr assistance is another area where we assist our entrepreneur so uh, we have very good infrastructure as far as you know the entrepreneurship development is concerned like consultancy processing sir uh, technology business, business incubator and the national collection of dairy by microorganisms or dairy cultures so we have around close to around 1000 different types of cultures national bioinformatics center livestock farm fodder farm biotechnology center experimental dairy model dairy and uh, basically we organize different type of training program and one very uh, historical aspect is that uh, uh, bapu mahatma gandhi ji uh, unfortunately uh, uh, this is you know like day when we all remember him uh, along with pandit madan mohal malviya he underwent uh, 21 days training at our bangalore center which was you know at that time it used to be called as imperial institute of animal husbandry and dairying and he uh, was a great advocate of uh, animal husbandry and especially this he was because throughout his life he consumed goat milk so because he was knowing about the nutritional and therapeutic virtues of the goat milk so he uh, we always suggest, tell proudly that he was our you know he was among our trainee and who has uh, promoted the dairy farming throughout his life the key features of our edp programs are like well defined module so we apply three tier approach in the first program we create uh, or sensitize our participant regarding the opportunities which, which which are existing involve key experts so both our from our institute from other organizations also flexible approach to address with the diverse need of training like you know because we get training from different different background some are like uh, highly educated some are like you know from engineering background some are pure science background some are uh, like uh, uh, builders or some so like that you know they so all persons are having different understanding regarding the business system so we also provide them opportunity for close interaction mentor support hands on training opportunity and in nutshell i can say we of provide complete held holding so it's not only that you attend the training program and go away we always keep on uh, uh, telling you that what you are doing why you are not doing if you are not doing then uh, what next okay so as far as our business incubation is concerned we have very good infrastructure as i said uh, so our focus is mostly on commercial dairy farming milk milk and milk product processing where uh, we organize generalized kind of our our product is specific also so in the in this business incubation program we enroll in qbt the promising one where we have uh, expertise available facilities available and then once they get the confidence uh, then we assist them in preparation of project feasibility report submission to the bank or funding agency assist in getting the requisite regulatory license test marketing commercial launching of the product so all these areas we support our entrepreneur and to support uh, our virtual incubate like you know one approach is in house people can come use our plant machinery another approach is where the people can establish their own venture and a team right from the beginning of conceptualization of idea uh, will assist them in uh, establishing the unit quality improvement product diversification and also establishing the link business so these are various kind of services which are available for our entrepreneur whether it is testing or whether it is consultancy or advisory services or even the custom hiring uh, all these kind of support we provide to our entrepreneur uh, we every year we uh, prepare the list of the technologies so if you visit on our website you will find you know the compendium the technologies where all promising technologies along with uh, their key features the cost uh, is available and how to you know how you can get these technologies uh so home to contact everything is available on our so this is these are you know the uh, product launching and test marketing counter which is located at our uh, gate near ndri gate 
and here every day close to around 500 to 700 people visit so they offer you uh, various their comments uh, regarding the product quality regarding the modification is required whether about the cost so on various aspects they provide the feedback which basically assist us so far you know we have enrolled 25 incubators on the business incubation program 14 are graduated fund we have facilitated for seven apart from that we have also enrolled uh, uh 59 uh, entrepreneur for technical support and we also assisted around uh <clears throat> 125 entrepreneurs for the startup in establishing of their business venture uh, we also try assisting in mobilization of the fund for incubating company so far around now this figure has reached to seven uh, of our incubating has uh, received you know startup recognition these are the present incubating graduated incubating uh, then apart from that, we are also working uh, very strongly because we have around 700 students uh, on campus. So we are also trying to promote the entrepreneurial skills uh, in our student. And for that, we have launched a program, Earl Y Lawn, under experiential learning program in our institute. Uh, these are some, you know, the you know, visibility of our programs and activities in the media, uh, media coverages. And also, you know, we try to link uh, with the various kind of government provisional schemes like dairy entrepreneurship development scheme deeds startup india stand up india so how to apply for that so we basically try to coordinate with different uh, nodal agencies and organizations how to prepare your application form or your presentation so these are the area where we normally uh, support our entrepreneur so these are uh, the linkages uh, we have established uh, regarding this sustainability and way forward we have initiated or strengthened our uh, currently available programs uh, in that area uh, so like you know so uh, you can see the number of technologies number of training programs which we are organizing so lastly i would like to quote certain things uh, although the, there are difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations the hard work put you where the good luck can find you so be optimistic be positive and if you feel that at any stage of your uh, entrepreneurial journey, we could be of any help or assistance or we can be, we can partner with you, you are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your patience uh, hearing and uh, thank you. If you have any query, you can, th these are the different mail, uh, like, you know, uh, mail IDs uh, where you can contact on these mail IDs regarding the technologies, with the, regarding our business incubation program and uh, training program. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for uh, sharing a 360-degree view on entrepreneurship opportunities in dairy sector. And uh, the session is open for Q&A, sir. I've also dropped uh, the questions in uh, WhatsApp group also. Apart from that, uh, people can uh, raise their hands or, you know, enter their question in the chat box. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Kishore can start uh, answering the questions if it is relevant to his uh, <clears throat> speech. So in the WhatsApp group, he can just check it out and uh, start answering the questions. So I'm uh, also saying that uh, the number of questions they are asking. Uh, so one approach is that uh, you allow uh, the entrepreneurs to directly contact me uh, like means they can ask or you can also send me the uh, like questions so that I, I along with their mail id so that i can answer that sure sir we'll share your uh, contact details also so that it will be easy for them to contact and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have only presented a uh, very little but we are doing it regards there was one question regarding the technologies of cheese making and all that okay so i would like to share here that uh, we are not confining ourselves only uh, to cow or buffalo milk cheeses but we are also working on uh, like goat milk and camel milk based kind of cheeses which are having a lot of export potential especially in the middle east market so cheeses is one category and we understand that uh, Indian palate generally prefer the fresher varieties of cheeses uh, where the difficulty is the shelf life. But we have addressed those issues also 
So like we have technology for feta cheese, we have technology for cottage cheese, we have technology for wheat based cheeses like ricotta. So these technologies, you know, uh, are available uh, and we also organize training program. And shortly we will uh, upload our schedule of our training program on our website. So anybody can approach us uh, for enrolling in those training program. Uh, currently, we are operating on offline mode, but uh, surely by the end of April or maybe in the month of April, we will start uh, hands-on training, hands-on training uh, in our institute. Yes, Mr. Kishore. Oh, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, Thank, th uh, thank you, Professor A.K. Singh. It's a wonderful session uh, 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 on uh, different aspects of dairy farming and different aspects of uh, production te technologies available at NDRA. Th thank you for that. Okay, thank you. There, there were a couple of questions directed uh, to SIDS Farm on, um, you know, one is NPOP uh, on uh, organic certification. And there was one uh, question on whether uh, farmers, uh, or potential dairy farmers, can come to us for training. Um, uh, yeah. So I would, say, yeah. I would like to say that we, some of our training programs are like uh, you know paid payment basis. But every year, close to training program we organize for the people who who cannot pay. Okay, only thing is you have to bear your uh, travel expenses or your living expenses and training charges would be borne by us only as a part of our social corporate responsibility. And one program every year we conduct for uh, people who are in serving either Indian Army or paramilitary forces or either retired one or even, you know, currently uh, on job. So for them, we organize training program free of cost. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, um, yeah, yeah, if people are around here as well, we welcome people to come to our farm as well. Uh, they can come down and look at the farm, and you know, if there is any session, we would love to take them through uh, uh, the, any training uh, that farmer would need uh, uh, in in dairy farming per se. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, the questions are in the group, sir, in the WhatsApp group. So either of the speakers can take up the questions and answer respectively. So like regarding uh, training, you know, there are a number of questions. So I, as I said that uh, by next week, you know, means maybe on the first of February, uh, if you look at our website or second February, you will find out the training dates and uh, along with you know for those training. Kind of, yeah. Yes, I also kept your website, sir. That is ndratbi.com. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, regarding the initial uh, part of the presentation, so a couple of questions like. Okay, uh, then there is uh, another question which has come from planning for plant based milk and milk products. Uh, basically, uh, this is one area where you'll find, you know, the dairy technologists are very emotional about, you know, milk and milk products. And when it comes to the plant-based one, there is a lot of debate is going on, but uh, it's a consumer choice. And uh, um, what we have observed that uh, when soya beverage was uh, uh, launched in India, in many places, adult food. One of our group of scientists developed a process how to distinguish the soya milk irritation in the milk. So this, this is the reason why people are not very forthcoming. But uh, uh, if anybody is interested to get the technical know-how regarding this plant-based milk, we can support. We have uh, information, we have knowledge, we have uh, practical experience, so we can support them. A uh, couple of questions are pouring in um, for uh, Mr. Kishore. So, uh, there was there is one question to us about uh, uh, how did you guys um, deal with coronavirus? Uh, 
um, uh, I would say we are fortunate that uh, you know we were able to survive. Milk industry in general, I think, survived a coronavirus better than the other industries. So for us, um, you know, the first few days was a little uh, stressful. I would say very stressful. I would say because a lot of our uh, delivery uh, boys, uh, people who deliver milk, um, you know, got caught with at different places because um, you know Corona. Uh, uh, um, we were doing, uh, um, I mean, in the first few days, you know, there was a lot of chaos, right, as it was getting implemented. Uh, but nevertheless, we never, uh, not for a single day, we stopped delivering our milk. We were able to uh, pull through the entire thing. It was it was a pretty stressful time. But, um, you know, uh, through the days, I mean, we never stopped operations. We were able to pull through it. A lot of our, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, this thing to our team who was able to uh, uh, pull through the entire operations both uh, at the plant side as well as making sure all the milk from the farmers came to us uh, uh, and also uh, and in the city side where we were delivering milk we were able to you know provide milk to our customers uh, without uh, you know without big disruptions there were a lot of challenges for example you know a lot of the security in apartments uh, stopped uh, uh, letting people in right um, so we, we had to, you know, our tickets that we track shot up through the roof because we were made to deliver uh, uh, milk packets outside the communities instead of giving it to the doorstep for a few days. So there was a lot of turmoil in the beginning, but we, we, we were able to, our, our team uh, was able to pull through it, uh, uh, pull through it well and manage the, manage the time. Yes, please. Sir, I've been worried about quality of animals available in our country. You have some international experience too. Uh, what do you think about the uh, situation of farmers in our country regarding the quality of animals they are having? Don't you think that uh, providing an animal which, is, uh, which can provide uh, from 8 liter to 16 liter per day Uh, see, I, I, we believe in, uh, you know, uh, taking uh, one step at a time, uh, you know, uh, uh, Johnny. Uh, see, what I mean by that is, you know, th there are problems that we can solve today. There are problems that we cannot uh, directly impact today. So we, we, we aim to, you know, uh, solve them one after the other. Um, um, so, I mean, uh, uh, I, I don't know whether I, was, I answered your question properly, but I, I see, well, you know, improving productivity, animal, productivity of animals, you know, slowly but gradually is, is an important thing that every dairy farmer, if he gets the right price, will do by himself. I mean, with, with obviously a lot of support from institutions like NDRI, with institutions like NABAD and I, I know a lot of um, you know, help from the government, uh, I think these problems will get uh, solved as long as the farmer is getting uh, fair uh, so there's one more there is one more question on sorry please go ahead yes. uh, having a good breeding program is Punjab from abroad and they updated uh, the quality of their animals none of the animals is doing that approach that. We even have uh, the ABC Salon breeding station in Raibari, Uttar Pradesh. The other we are having uh, Sarvamadhi Ashram Goshala in Gujarat. But uh, the farmers uh, throughout the country are not in a position to get the uh, elite gemplasm from any of these stations. So, are in a position to address this issue. The, uh, uh, I mean, correcting all these big issues. Sir, I'm not a uh, I'm not a big expert on this, so I'll probably divert the question to uh, Professor uh, Professor Singh. Uh, this is regarding. Uh, can you again ask the question? Yes. available across the country is a primary concern to all the farmers. Even though yes. we have breeding stations in India, we do have some private players uh, who are bringing uh, salmon from a. We don't have a uh, distribution plan. 
where the farmer get a choice to choose the gem uh, blossom that he is looking out for out of the all uh, that is available across the country without having such a system in place farmer get an elite animal or how can he uh, improve the breed quality of the animal that's a, a primary problem the farmer uh, from our observation okay uh, see uh, uh, like before going for any uh, like you know like a breeding program and all that first of all as a animal keeper you have to understand you have to learn exactly how to breeding is done uh, with what kind of animal you have to do any uh, breeding because you know uh, whatever uh, like in, in the initial stage uh, of our uh, white revolution efforts you know we uh, totally adopted the cross breeding program okay and there we uh, like uh, used our high productive animals for breeding and nowadays you know most of our productive animals are no more like you know they are not available good gem plasm is not available in the field conditions however i am talking about the indigenous one. but hamara like our strategy should have been that uh, we should use the low productive animal with the high milk yielder from the exotic varieties whether it's holstein or jersey or frisian whatever you know so nowadays regarding your this question there are a number of private play by players i always suggest many of uh, the people that why not you uh, uh, you become a kind of supplier and especially the dairy graduates or agriculture graduates they can uh, have a network from these different kind of uh, you know semen and other agro input uh, like you know animal uh, input companies from where you source and you provide them to the uh, needy ones so like uh, we have few incubating companies who have enrolled in this area whom we are training with whom we are assisting uh, to develop this kind of uh, you know activity as a business model regarding that one yeah yes, yes, yes proper proper training is required because ai uh, if you look at the success rate of ai this is not more than 20 25% okay so the reason is that uh, most of these these inseminators are not properly trained not properly trained and uh, there are certain regulations uh, by the veterinary council of india uh, that's why you know uh, not much organizations are also working for training part we are also of the opinion that uh, we should train them properly so that they can uh, work in the field conditions like you know the temperature is uh, like of the straw semen straw is very critical the time of insemination the recognition of you know the heat detection itself these are certain issues and lot of advancement has taken place the only thing is this advancement is only limited to organized dairy farms not with the common you know farmers Actually, the Kerala Livestock Development Board is uh, having the network uh, over Kerala, okay. uh, which is a state-owned entity, and uh, from uh, their field stations or uh, their breeding stations. And uh, yeah. here, the farmers are uh, not taking a chance to get the uh, semen from outside of, uh, of the state. And uh, secondly, even if, if the farmer or the dairy unit is having an LN container. Uh, filled with uh, liquid nitrogen in every 20 days and that supply is not possible in many areas and uh, even though the government uh, of the state has the uh, and being uh, uh, entity of the government they are not uh, i mean uh, helpful uh, or they are not willing to uh, provide the liquid nitrogen that is necessary to keep up the gem plus uh, the uh, i mean uh, the pop i mean sorry the government infrastructure and the private as uh, uh, are doing in a different way and uh, uh, both are looking into their own business uh, rather than uh, i mean uplifting you know, the interest of the farmer or uh, on something on that yes yes, yes. So, so there was one question directed to us on uh, uh, on uh, NPOP uh, certification. Does Sitzfam have NPOP certification? Um, so we do not currently have NPOP certification. So we, uh, as I just said, we we we're starting with the first problem. We want to make sure we produce pure milk, uh, and by pure milk, we're first starting with 
we make sure that uh, our milk does not have any in any kind of adulterants, uh, uh, any kind of preservatives, uh, then antibiotics and then hormones. You know, once we do that, once we start, maybe based on practices, we'll start segregating farmers and then uh, hopefully go and get uh, 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 groups of farmers whom we certify as organic. Right? We want to make sure our processes and systems are there first before we apply for, uh, before we get into uh, certification. And regarding there is an issue uh, question regarding the availability of rapid you know antibiotic detection kit. Yes, these kits are available. Uh, you can Google on Delmos Private Limited and Delmos and there is another company called Florisar. These two companies are incubating company of NDRI Karnal and they have a kit which uh, can be used at the collection point itself for detection of antibiotic residues. Then there is another question regarding the. Uh, what is the uh, in in vitro or in vivo system uh, especially in the animal small small animal model like you know mice or rat model there we can assist them Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for, okay. for your valuable inputs. Uh, thank you, Dr. A. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kishore. Uh, any more questions from the startups? We can raise your hand. Uh, we can unmute so that you can directly talk. I see that. Okay, uh, I think... Sorry. Um, hello, sir. Uh, Okay, sure, sir. Uh, sir, how much capital investment has been gone in quality assessment facility? Any figures? Any rough figures? So, uh, yes, sir. So, uh, so basically, we started with uh, uh, you know pretty basic testing first, right? For example, uh, 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 so we first started with uh, uh, NDDB kits. The NDDB uh, kit uh, in in uh, uh, you know when we first started we used to get a kit for two thousand two hundred, right? It would last us for about uh, uh, six days. Right? That is the kit that we started with initially. Then we realized the cost of testing was a little high, so we started we, we started buying uh, chemicals and reagents. You know, uh, very detailed processes are, are available on the uh, FSSA website. You can do basic testing for a pretty low cost, right? Today, uh, you know, we do uh, our uh, basic adulterant testing for less than, uh, you know, maybe less than a, a close to a rupee per uh, a test. Uh, right? This is reagent-based testing. Then, uh, you know, once we uh, uh, then we started to look at uh, antibiotic test kits. Right? Some of the antibiotic test kits, um, you know, actually come from China. Uh, uh, Professor Singh sir uh, mentioned about Delmos. We we did look at it. Uh, but uh, so these are European companies and uh, Chinese companies that are selling antibiotic test kits today. They cost anywhere from uh, 100 to 150 rupees uh, a test. So that is the cost uh, that it would uh, take to do antibiotic testing. So uh, we uh, Indifos machine that does automatic uh, adulterant testing for five parameters cost about four lakhs. So you can actually scale your quality testing in stage. You don't have to do all at once. Right, you, you can you know as you you deem fit for your organization, you can start to pull the amount of mo money that you want to invest uh, invest in the this thing. Something like a HPLC would cost you a lot more money. You have to spend up to 10, 10 lakhs to get it, then to a second hand one. So um, uh, you know, I think as as your uh, organization uh, is growing, you can invest. We actually did write a grant for Manage to help us, uh, you know, uh, the grant uh, uh, to help us with some of the testing as well. This is an, 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 we put it as part of our grant as well. So you can, uh, to answer it uh, in short, you can do it in stages. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that was a great session and request Mr. Yuraj uh, to go with the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kaushik. Uh, we would thank Dr. Ashish Kumar Singh from NDRA Karnal has given uh, breadth and depth of uh, entire dairy industry with very innovative ideas, 
how startups can venture into multiple things and scale up thank you very much sir would love to have multiple in the future also with our sessions similarly i uh, would like to thank dr kishore from seed farm who can inspire with his story the coming generation of entrepreneurs who want to get into dairy farming dairy farming related uh, startups we will be sharing their uh, respective mail ids with all the participants please use them judiciously judiciously for your uh, benefit thank you very much uh, we will see you in the uh, coming webinar series thank you thanks a lot sir thank you thank you thank you one and all uh, as said uh, we shall be going with the next webinar on the next saturday that is 11 am ist also uh, we have our uh, you know on website we have the registration page so one can go ahead and register for the webinar and just tune into the you know next webinar on the other session and uh, thank you thank you thank you thank you all thank you thanks guys